Mute it. You want to mute it? Mute it. Okay. All right. Everybody here, give us a thumbs up. So, okay, let's get going. Welcome to our November Zoom coffee hour here on location. So with Prairie Home owner Jackie Borlachek, who so graciously invited us into her space this morning. I'm Pastor Heidi Heimgartner, um, Faith Lutheran um, Dutch Center intern Peter Anderson. Couldn't make it. She wanted to come so badly, but she had another event at her congregation. But we do want to thank Pastor Mike, who is letting us into the Zoom room today. Um, and thank all of you for taking part. This is meant to be a time of uplift and beauty and a little learning and a lot of casual just hanging out, know, experiencing things together. So welcome each of you, but also welcome those of you who will be joining later. Um, I know that we'll record and we'll be watching later. So um, let's spend just a few minutes making our home a sanctuary. So on November 29th, 2020, that's two weeks from today, uh, the season of Advent begins. And this is your cue, friends who are watching. If you are um, working at home, gather your materials, please, because we are going to um, start our wreath making. But before we do so, I'm going to give you just a little brief history. And maybe some of this you know, and maybe some of it you know about. <laughs> um, so the word Advent comes from a Latin word that means coming or upcoming. Um, and Advent points two directions at once. That's how I explain this to the confirmation kids. So Advent points backwards to the past, right? When we think about the baby Jesus coming at Christmas. So Advent points the backwards direction to the past, but it also points to the future direction and the coming again of Jesus. So um, the first mention of the season of Advent occurred in the year 380. So this is a really old season of the church here. Um, at a meeting of church leaders called the Council of Sargosa in Spain. I would like to go to Spain and see Sargosa. Um, there was written record during that council that forbid church members from being absent from church in the month of December. It said it was so important, you needed to be there from December 17th through the Epiphany. You had to be there, um, which is thought to be an early reference to the season of Advent, that it was a special time. And then the first time it was really mentioned as the word Advent was in the 500s. And similar to a mini Lent, Lent is an older season of the church here, but Advent was seen as a mini Lent um, because it has that kind of penitential, reverential feel to it. Sometimes it's even called winter Lent, not here, but in other parts of the world. Um, so since the sixth century in our calendar, we've had this season. Um, so again, this year that begins on November 29th, 2020. That's actually the beginning of the church year, so happy new year, a couple, year, couple weeks Thanks. early. Thank you. And then the season of the church year goes all the way around to November 2021. The last day of the church year is called Christ the King Sunday. Okay, so Advent wreaths, they are not as old as the season. In fact, the first Advent wreath that I found reference to was made in the year 1839 by a Lutheran. Sorry, Jackie. <laughs> By a Lutheran who was trying to teach kids how to mark time because, of course, they were anticipating Christmas. Um, so traditionally, there are evergreens, right, mm -hmm. a symbol of eternity, but also um, several candles. We use four now, and the symbolic candle designations are, okay, let me get these in the right order. Hope, love, joy, and peace, all right? And the violet one, or the rose one, is the peace candle, or the joy candle, which is the third week of Advent. So some reeds have a fifth candle stuck in the middle, a white candle, it's called the Christ candle. We do that at first. today and learning a lot as we go and as I prepared for this and as I think of the Advent season I think of that word preparation 
and what is it that we're doing in our home, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but then also internally in the preparation of the heart and advent of the heart. So we'll talk a little bit about the advent wreath. I've prepared one halfway because it would take us a little while to do an entire one, um, but also just showing that there's different forms that it could come in. So especially now, I think people are doing modern wreaths. And so you'll see all different kinds of takes on that. This, what I'm working on today is more traditional. Uh, of course, you can use real and we could also use artificial. The process would be very similar. I know a lot of people already just use a wreath that they have mm -hmm. and lay it flat, which is also awesome and perfect. Um, today, like I said, I'm using real pines and real greens. I've got a little bit of boxwood and some princess pine along you know, one of my favorite cedar and spruce for the most part these are going to hold up really well this is actually like a week and a half old and i've had it out of my cooler and in my cooler so it's really held up quite well uh, one quick trip uh tip if you can find wilt stuff this is phenomenal you spray it on your greens they'll hold together and they'll stay green with real greens obviously we have the risk of fire. And so I don't want to be responsible for any fire in any home. So please use caution. Probably maybe flameless candles would be a good option if you're using the live breeze. They do dry out and they become quite flammable. So the first thing you're going to do is maybe go out into your yard, if you're so lucky, and grab some greens. You may or may not have these. If you don't, you can pick some up here. You can borrow some from your neighbor. Um, go for a drive, obviously be safe, but you'll snip from each of these different kinds of length, and these are going to come in different sizes. I know different folks have different size wreath forms, but snip a length that you'll be able to wire in. Um, you'll strip the base of each of those so that you can use your wire, and I alternate how I place these and layer them. So for this one, I'm using my long needle pine that's going to go on the bottom. Next, kind of strip the spruce so you can more easily wrap the wire. He's going to go next, and then I have a little bit of cedar, which is awesome. And I've had, like I said, I've been doing this all week, and things are holding up really well. It's, I, I wish it was smell of vision you guys. It already <laughs> smells so good. It does. But take a short length of wire, something thin that's easy to work with, and just wrap it around. You'll want to do this and create several bundles that you have prepared that you can just add on to your wreath. So that's what I've got laying here. Um, like I said, sometimes I alternate the order. It just gives a little bit more interest. Yeah, you can lay them on the yep. ground now. And what you'll do is you'll alternate laying and wiring this onto your wreath form. This particular one has the candle already. It has a little spot for candles Taper. in there. Yeah, exactly, which makes it handy. Some have it, some don't. And then what we do is we MacGyver it. <laughs> I, <don't. laughs> I thought that um, there was a special word for it, but no, you just MacGyver it, make it up, make it work, make it safe for your home. So what we'll do, I have this paddle wire that I've been wrapping all the way around. It is green, so you mm -hmm. can't see it. You have to hide all of your... So you actually, once you do your bundles, they get their own wire, but then you separately wire to the form. Exactly. A second time, yeah. With this paddle wire, that will remain as one entire loop and it holds everything Got together. It. Got it. So next I'm just going to place him <clears throat> so that you can still see that taper um, holder, mm -hmm. I guess is a good word for it, uh, and kind of fluff around that and just wrap it around. It, I don't know, I was so intimidated. I thought I couldn't do these. I really was. I can do porch pots, I can do a lot of things, but I was very intimidated. If I can do it, you can do it too. So it's not always pretty. We fluff it, we make it beautiful, mm -hmm. but in the moment, you just work with it. So I'm wrapping this around. As you can see, those are, that's all I'm doing and that's tight in there. It's gonna mm -hmm. hold. So then we'll take another one of your bundles that you've created of the three different greens and layer it in. Can you guys see okay? <laughs> layer it in and just keep wrapping it around. I have a question. What kind of preparations for Christmas did you engage in growing up? Like, what were your traditions when you were a kid? Well, we always had a Christmas tree, but being in the Catholic faith, um, that was sort of more the uh, 
um, bent that we were doing like the Catholic thing, but we're very similar, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty similar. <laughs> Pretty similar. Thank God. Take, <laughs> I love it. Taking another bundle, layering it in. You can alternate going in, out, in, out, so that you get a pretty full read. And you just keep binding it with that paddle wire. Um, so we always had a tree. Did you always have an eye for beauty? Did you like rearrange after your mom put it to the salon? Did you go back and fix it? So <laughs> my mom is the original and she might be watching. <laughs> so my mom taught me everything. She's super oh, creative. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a family trait that you made think so, think beautiful. I think so. Oh, I Absolutely. So how about now? What are your traditions now? Because you do so much here. So I'm wondering how does that work at home? I know. Um, you know, honestly, like in my personal life, I would say that um, here, it has to be about the um, artistry and the decorations in my personal life. I try to quiet myself a little bit more and just have that more of that introspection during this season. It's busy here and I love yeah. it. And it's so fun. And I've gotten to know so many people in the community. But once I leave here, I kind of have to take my breather and do yep. the internal preparation yep. like we talked about. Yep. Yep. That's so, beautiful. As you can see, it does go really quickly and you it can't does. you can't mess it up i promise so then i'll just show you um as pastor heidi was talking about those candles yeah you can go ahead and just find the little spots in there and place those in if you don't have a wreath form that has the taper holders um, like i said you can wire them in just do it safely um, i know i did send a um a floral foam mm -hmm. wreath with mm -hmm. someone so you could soak that in water which is really oh. nice because then your greens are getting that water source and then you put it in a tray or something exactly. when you can, yeah and mm -hmm. water it mm -hmm. through the whole season and that's going to keep those greens alive a little bit more so and mist it like spray it with a mister would that be the way to do it you or? certainly could if you do this wilt stuff if you do the spray it's actually like a sap that protects that and then it will hold in moisture Cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Looks great. Very traditional, right? Mm -hmm. It's perfect. We love it. So yeah. um, what do you think people need most this time of year? And I hope you're at home if you're working alongside that you keep working while we talk. But I'm curious for you, like, what do you feel like is people, you see a lot of people, you know a lot, you know, you know our community. What do you think people need most? I'm thinking this year in particular. We can talk about generally, but I'm yeah. thinking about right now. Yeah. Um, I think that I see a lot of uh, people that are struggling with loneliness right now. And so whatever it is to reach out, we know we can't give the hugs like we want to. We can't be maybe even physically in the same place, but making those phone calls, learning technology, and that's gonna be one thing when I talk about later about technology and creating the sanctuary in your home. Um, <laughs> it can be dicey, you know, there's a time and place for it, but uh, right now during COVID, it's a reality. Absolutely, absolutely. So what does the word sanctuary mean to you? Mm -hmm. Sacred space. Mm -hmm. And that can be in your physical, you know, in your home here at the shop, um, but it's also internal. I was saying how a sanctuary is an inside job and an outside job. <laughs> yeah, talk about that more. Tell us more about, because we talked, we had a very deep conversation on Tuesday, everyone. I wish you were here, <laughs> but you know, we yeah. talked about the, these things are not just things we do to do but they do something inside them too. So tell us your, cause I think you have a very beautiful philosophy on why this stuff matters because it really does matter. It's an outward manifestation of what's going on in our heart. Right, right. Uh, so sanctuary in the physical sense, things that surround us can enrich our lives. Um, definitely and making things beautiful, especially if you're um, different people see that in different ways. Maybe that's in a very stark, you know, very mm -hmm. modest um, surroundings. And sometimes it, people really know what they like, what makes them feel comfortable. But then also that whether it's a practice of gratitude mm -hmm. or whether it's really cultivating your prayer life, um, creating the sanctuary kind of has to happen inside and outside. We're disillusioned sometimes by objects and having to have all the latest things. But if you have that piece inside and you've cultivated that um, in your spiritual life, I think it's just so much more rich. Mm -hmm. I think so too. And then you start looking at those things around you as um, conduits of God's love, right? And the people, but also the objects that you can put things together differently than you did last year, or you can look outside your window and see all kinds of beauty that maybe you never saw before. Like, you know, how many of us would have taken the time last year to make a wreath from scratch, but this year, maybe the luxury of time allows us to really touch and be part of some of that stuff Absolutely. or make for a neighbor, right? Or yeah. for a family member. 
Um, what other creative ideas do you have for us this morning? I know you had some thoughts about different stuff. So. Well, I just think, um, in speaking specifically about uh, the physical aspect of sanctuary, I see it through the framework of your senses because it's, you know, really what can be see, smell, and we've heard a lot about Hugo or Higgy, which oh, is yeah. the Scandinavian um, word for, I think, exactly this, like finding comfort and creating a sacred safe space for yourself and your family. So that's kind of how we're going to explore. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, please add or ask questions or clarify if it doesn't make sense to, to you. But um, for me, probably one of, what, is, what do you think is the sense that you feel is more that, that is most valuable to you? Honestly, for me, yeah. I, that has changed. Probably visual number one. Yeah. And a close second is, um, Hearing, for me, music is a big part of it, which is, you know, how, not what we're talking about today, but I've learned that, um, so this is, I'm, I'm telling stories on my kids. <laughs> when my, when, when winter today. came, yes. when winter came, especially when they were little and there was a little stir crazy, you know, cabin fever going on, mm -hmm. I found I could change the mood and the atmosphere of the house by what music was playing. And so I learned how to um, create environments that were calming and peaceful yeah. right yeah. so so for yeah. us i would say but also they love ritual you know kids do love ritual mm -hmm. we, we talked at our house actually just the other day because we had to say you know we're not having thanksgiving with loved ones right. okay what what would you like to do instead and do you know what it was it was all the ritual it yeah. was well then we need a treat then we need to decorate this well we need to have this you know all of those things that mean holiday right the active pieces. So, I mean, I think it's important. And what we talked about in that really good conversation was keeping those traditions. Yes. So even if it is just a small group gathering or just yourself or you and your partner, uh, to keep those traditions, even if it's hard to dig out the boxes. Right, right. <laughs> and it's a lot of work so we can think cost benefit wise. It isn't worth it, but it's so worth it. I think so. Yeah, for sure. So just in exploring those senses, I think for myself, actually smell, and everybody in my family would attest to this, that I'm very sensitive to smell. And so uh, smell, whether it's, you know, some people do the essential oils or smelly candles, a Palo Santo wood is sort of like incense. I don't know if you've ever heard. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove my mask. <laughs> it smells like incense to me, but it just can create that Oh, right, smell can bring you back to a place. It can bring you back to an emotion. So this is my primary mm. way of experiencing the world, I think, is smell. Um, it's really important to me. So very sensitive to it. But beautiful. <laughs> Another thing is just um, sight, obviously, what we see around us. You guys probably know there's a huge plant craze going on right now. And I think it just goes back to nature and bringing living things into the home. And so whether it's plants, uh, also, you know, of course, my being here is flowers. And sometimes people will think, wow, that's really expensive. But look at one single stem or just something simple in a container you have at home. I know you guys are so creative. I'm not sure who's tuning in today. <laughs> I saw a few creative ones. <laughs> super creative um, ladies and gentlemen out there. So simple blood bases that you have at home, one little stem in there. Mm -hmm. And that beauty can enrich us and bring us back to the hope, the finding the inner peace, and then lights mm -hmm. and candles. So obviously if you have pets or small children or if you're forgetful, like me, <laughs> an actual flame on a candle can be dangerous. Right. But it instantly transforms a space. Mm -hmm. There will be a time towards the end of the day, now that our day is getting shorter and the, the um, sun goes down, it'll be close to five o'clock and I'm locking up. If you see the lights off in here, I'm still here. <laughs> But I love the twinkle, oh. and I love the candles, and I just that calm yeah. and that uh, it just creates that sacred space. So lighting, maybe it's the dimmer switch, maybe it's the little twinkle fairy lights. I can turn these guys on them. So more safe, um, whatever it is. Oh uh, yeah, the oh, yeah. yeah. The lights are are so impactful. Mm -hmm. I agree, and. Um, you know, natural light versus artificial light, you know, and feasting your eye on what is more a natural calming light. I think huge difference in terms of, you know, we have to have fluorescent 
because of we living in Minnesota. But to have it 12 or 15 hours a day, I don't think our eyes and our hearts are made for that kind of constant hum. And so, at least for me, that's we do that as well. We have a vocal point at home. And then yes, because for us, it lights are just a constant vibration. Right. So it's actually a flickering a million times, and it can really be agitating to certain people. So mm -hmm. yeah, if you're in that office environment or or a place where you see it, you're in, I think that's an excellent point with fluorescent lights, turning those down. Even when I was in the classroom, yeah, you do lamps instead of the overhead lights because there's just too much stimulation. Oh, oh, I didn't even think of it. So you did that in your classroom. Yeah. Sometimes we do that in the sanctuary, everybody, when we have Advent services, all the fluorescent lights go out yeah. just for that reason, to create that mood right. of right. calm yeah. when you walk in. Absolutely. Yes, it makes a big difference. We need them, you know, for bright things and reading mm -hmm. bulletins and all of that, but sometimes it's nice to just sit. So you share this story about your family, mm -hmm. and my husband and my stepdaughter, I don't know if they're tuning in, um, but I came home, it was a particularly crazy day at the shop, running here, there, just couldn't get where I needed to go fast enough. Came home, lights were dim, the food was cooking, chicken marsala, and oh. there was a little jazz in the background, oh. and instantly, once again, it just bringing that, um, What's the what's your uh, stress hormone? Yeah, cortisol. cortisol. My cortisol level dropped immediately Aww. just by walking into that space. It smelled amazing. The lights were down. We had the auditory yeah. and the of the soft music. It was delightful. It was such a wonderful evening. So you'll never forget it. And then you can return to it, right? It's easy to recreate again and again. And luckily, I have a wonderful chef. In <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard there's a chef. Um, yeah, she's fantastic. I, but um, you're kind of a chef too, a little bit. So let's let's switch over yeah, to that let's taste, about that it. sense of taste. So in your life and your family, what is uh, what's the favorite meal? Is there a holiday meal? Oh my gosh, um, it depends on the holiday, right? Um, and we are ones that um, you know we're often busy with worship, so the big feasting usually is not in our home. It's usually in the other home. But our favorite, probably what the kids would say is their favorite tradition. I think was the holiday meal we would do is the week that the children have the Christmas program here at First Lutheran, that Sunday, which is usually the second or third Sunday of December, is when I go all out. So that's when we get the china out, and we have grandma and grandpa come, and aunt and uncle, and we make whatever I feel like making. And usually it's comfort food. You know, it's like uh, roast beef and mashed potatoes, and a big plate of Christmas cookies. Um, I, I do go so far as to do the tablescape and everybody goes home with an ornament. I, I am that person, you know, and there's a theme. So each year has a theme. And so, well this year, we're, yeah, this year I have no kids in the program. So I think we're taking a year off. But last year, I'm trying to remember, Paul, what was our theme? I think it was, I think it was sparkle. So I think there was glitter. There was a lot of glitter. So doesn't that go back to what we talked about is keeping those traditions alive? And if you have it, typically the one to eat on the good china, because we always save that, right? We save our good china, the fancy glasses, we save that for some special time. You guys, that during coronavirus, there's never been a better time. Yeah. Like yeah. Said, we have a little bit of time in our lives, extra time, hopefully, maybe, maybe not during this crazy season. But um, I've got a table set, yeah. we've got all the sparkles, yeah. using great grandma's china. It is, I just love it. I love that tradition. And people, even if they don't, know the stories behind it, I think they appreciate the thought and care, right? So, um, and then sometimes for us, we would actually add um, a question under everybody's plate and get people sharing memories. And that, because that was what, you know, otherwise you end up defaulting to politics or, you know, whatever. And I thought, I don't want our family dinner to be that. I want it to be deeper stories. So everybody would get a question they had to answer before I'm giving food. I know, I know.
I say your name, like Oprah always has her favorite name list. Paint of the high end board, have your sweaters, throws, the soft blankets, the afghans, just because right yeah. now, we're looking for that, that comfort, right? Yeah. We have a, one of those um, kind of like, I don't even know what you call it, they're polyester, but it's like that minky fabric. Yeah. And it's nicknamed the good, good blanket in our house because <laughs> everybody wants that one, you know, the good, good blanket. <laughs> I've heard of it. Do you have a weighted blanket? I don't, but I really, I think I want one. <laughs> Just provide that extra. Yeah, sure. I think it can cause, um, cause just like a calming. Yeah, it, it's supposed to turn on that, um, that in your brain. So, yeah. All right. I, I don't know that we're going to be able to hear because we have an external mic plugged in so you can hear us. Um, but I'm curious for those who are listening and watching along. Um, do you have any questions? And if so, if you could put them in the chat, then our wonderful uh, engineer here, Paul, is going to um, <laughs> read so them much. for us. So even if it's just a hello and, you know, where you're watching from or something like that, can you find the chat button? Is it there? Mm -hmm. On the iPad, it's a lot simpler device. So look in the bottom, hover down in the bottom, and the tray might come up. And then there might be a chat function there. Do you see it? Oh, I see lots of beautiful people watching. I was just going to oh, say, oh, you, 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 all right, you keep talking and I'm going to fix that. We'll get the chat. Well, I'm so curious to know once we get the chat going and uh, what other people will share as their traditions and how they create sanctuary. I would love to hear that. I love those deeper conversations that we have at this time of the year and really connecting. Um, yesterday, we did a porch pot class, a socially distancing porch pot class. And I got to visit it with so many friends and people that I haven't seen for a long time. So I want to hear from you guys. All right. Um, we heard, I'm hearing that we lost volume, so I'm trying to find out if, you, if they can hear now. Okay. I wonder if it's because my cooler. Okay, they said yes, so that's great. Okay. All right. Chat. Give us so that you can stick in branches and they'll actually stint it because you've got a wire in there. So I'm just filling it out. Yes, it's beautiful. <laughs> and that's the neat thing about a wreath is you can always tuck more in, right? But Absolutely. Especially when it's flat, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Gravity <laughs> helps you. Gravity helps you. <laughs> All right, so if you have any questions in the chat or you just want to say hi, um, please do give us your best tips about the five senses or anything else about creating sanctuary, especially if you have a tradition you want to share with the group or an old tradition that you want to revive. I like an interactive class. I know, me so too. When we were teaching the porch pot class, I was asking people, like, do you have a question? Shout it out because it creates a more dynamic experience. It does. Think, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Don't be shy. Come on, shy Lutherans. <laughs> I'm curious how many people do make Advent wreaths in their home. All right, how many of you guys make Advent wreaths in your house or some sort of Advent, maybe it's a calendar? I know people have that. Um, you know, they either buy one or they, they have an old one they, they put the dates on. I know some people count down that way too if it's not a wreath. I do an Advent wreath and some, some years it was decoupage cheap candles, you know, just with tissue paper to make them the right color. I mean, there's so many simple ways. Um, First Lutheran typically does an Advent festival, and so we do a lot of these kind of traditional preparations, and much of my tree is decorated by Joyce and Margie Hansen, who make sure that our littles always have beautiful yeah. ornaments, and I think many of the people watch too. Diane Olson says, love this, can we do more of these? Uh, <laughs> Judy Bishop says, I have always loved lights in the windows. Yeah. Um, and Diane also says, we light an Advent candle. All right, so we've got lighting of Advent candles, candles in windows. Um, I've done that with all kinds of ex 
things like, but it seems like my suction cups don't work. So okay. tell me, tell me your best hints for candles in the window because it is hard. I think they get cold. Yeah. That's when they pop off. But I think with a little moisture. I lick them. Yep. <laughs>
And if neighbors need help with their traditions or with creating sanctuary, again, now is the time to safely reach out. So um, to end our time, um, we're going to pray. There will be a blessing on our homes that I'm going to place when we, when we get this all done and, and snazzed up. We're going to have a blessing that is going to be placed with our video um, that you can use. It will also, I think, go in the holiday mailing that all of you Lutherans will receive. Uh, so don't worry about writing it down or memorizing it. You'll get a copy of that. Um, and then that is what you can use as you finish your decorating mm -hmm. to ask God to be with you in the season. All right, so let's end with prayer. Holy and gracious God, Advent is a time when we look back, but we also look forward. And so guide us into the futures that we and you are creating together now. Give us hope. Give us love. Give us joy. And give us peace. May your light surround and fill us. Help us in all that we do and create to bring you into better focus. In Christ's precious name we pray. Amen. All right, we wish each of you a blessed Advent. Round of applause for our presenter. Thank you so much. And if you need any materials for your Advent,